Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and welcome to the first tutorial in this new series on building security tools in Go. Now in this tutorial, we're going to be building a very cool port scanner which will be able to point to any server you wish and probe it for any potential vulnerabilities. Now this tutorial will hopefully give us a good understanding of what port scanning is and why we should be aware of what ports we are leaving open on any of the machines that we currently run our applications on top of. So first of all, what is port scanning? Well, port scanning is the act of iterating over every port on a machine and checking to see which ones are open, closed or filtered. Now in total, there are just over 130,000 ports on a typical machine and 6,000 or 65,535 of which are TCP and the other 65,535 which are UDP. Now, each of these ports could effectively be a way into your system if we left them open and port scanning as a technique effectively allows security engineers to see if there are any potential ways to gain access to your system from the likes of unpatched software running on these ports. So why should we care about this? Now, this is one of the biggest offenders when it comes to identifying how a security breach has occurred. Security breaches can be caused by any number of combinations such as leaving ports open and not updating the services behind those ports or leaving the services in an unauthenticated state or not set up correctly. Now, there are a number of different ways that we can protect ourselves from these security issues, however, and the simple act of running services in a segregated network zone, such as maybe in an AWS private v VPC, can actually greatly improve your security posture as it means that only machines within that VPC can communicate with your server. Now, with this in mind, let's jump into the code and see how we can implement our own simple port scanning tool in Go, which can help us to better evaluate the systems that we develop and deploy for any security vulnerabilities. So let's jump into our code editor of choice and start programming our port scanner. Now, as you can see here, I've got a very simple main.go application written up. Now, I've also initialized this with Go modules. So the Go mod file has been created and I've committed this or initialized this against github.com slash Elliot Forbes slash Athena. And I'm using Go 113 for this. So the first thing I'm, I'm gonna want to do is create a new file called port slash port.go. This will create a new directory called port and a new file port.go. Now within this, I'm gonna define the package port, which is going to contain all of the functionality for scanning ports and iterating over ports. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do within this new package is define a scan port function. Now, this is going to take in a protocol, either TCP or UDP, uh, a host name, both are going to be type string, and a port, which is type int. Now, this is going to return a Boolean value as to whether or not the port is open or closed. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do is to create the address, which is going to be a concatenation of hostname plus colon plus string conversion and ITOA passing in port like so. Now, now that we have this address with the hostname and the port, we then want to try and connect to that address. So connection or error is equal to net.dial timeout, like so, and protocol address, and 68 times time.second. Now, saving that, you'll notice that it's imported the net, string conversion, and time and packages from the standard library. Now, immediately below this connection attempt, I want to do the following. So if error does not equal nil, I want to return false as the port is not accepting connections. And I want to defer the connection dot close and then return true. So basically what this says is if the connection isn't accepting any requests on this given hostname and this port, return false. If it does, then defer the connection closing and return true. Now, with this function in place and exported using the capitalization of the S here, let's go into our main.go file and we're going to import the port package. So github.com slash 
Elliot Forbes slash Athena slash port. Now within the body of my main function, I'm going to want to do the following. So I'm going to want to do open, which will be a new Boolean variable equals port dot scan port. And I'm going to try TCP localhost. And I'm currently running my site in a Hugo server on port 1313. So I'm going to test that one. And then I'm going to print out the result. So fmt.printf port open and it's a billion. And then I want to pass in open like so. Now let's give that a shot by coming into the terminal and running go run main.go. And as you can see, it has successfully returned that the port is open and accepting connections. Now let's try a negative case. So 1314, which I know isn't running with anything. And as you can see, port scan has failed and it's returned false. Perfect. So now that we have the ability to scan an individual port to check if it's open, let's expand our application so that we can implement an initial scan function within our port package. Now this is going to do the job of scanning the lower end of the port range from 1 to 1024 as these are all well-known ports that have been pre-allocated to various services such as HTTP on port 80, SSH on port 22, or FTP on port 21, just to name a few. And if we can find an open port within this range, then we can start the security or the penetration testing with that port, and we don't have to do a wider scan as doing a wide range scan over all 65,000 ports is quite time consuming, so we want to ma minimize the amount of time it takes to find the first potential vulnerability. Okay, so let's define this initial scan function. So func initial scan. It's going to take in a host name, which will be type string, and it's going to return a new struct type that we're going to define in just a second. And we're going to call this scan result. Now, just above our scan port function, we're going to define this struct now. So type scan result struct if I can spell and this is going to have two fields so the port which will be type int and state which will be type string like so. Now we're going to want to expand upon our scan port function ever so slightly and instead of returning a bool we're going to want to define or determine that this returns a scan result like so. Now the result is going to be equal to a new scan result. And we're going to set the port as port here. So this basically initializes a new scan result object. And we can then do things like result.state equals closed if we can't connect to it, or result.state equals open if we can connect to it. And then finally, we want to change these return types to result, like so. Perfect. Now within our initial scan function, we then want to do var results, which will be an array of scan result. And then we're gonna to want to kick off a simple for loop. So for i equals zero, actually it will change this to one. Uh, i is less than or equal to 1024, i plus plus, and results equals append results and scan port. And we're going to do a TCP for now, passing in the host name and i, which will be the port. Finally, we want to return these results like so. Now, within our main.go function, we then want to try call this initial scan. And we're going to do that by typing results equals port dot initial scan. And I'm going to pass in localhost for now. And then finally, we'll print out, print out the results. So results. Cool. So coming into the terminal, let's do go run main.go. And first one returns. And then it will have to iterate through all 1024 ports. So this could take quite a wee bit of time. So I'm gonna come back to this in just a second. Cool, so that result has finished or that scan has finished. And we can now see that 
all 1024 ports have been scanned and the results are now printing out in the terminal. Now, the final thing we're going to be doing in this tutorial is extending our initial scan to also scan the UDP ports. Now, I am going to come into the port.go package and I'm going to do some slight modifications here. So I'm going to change port to string and then I'm going to create a concatenation of the protocol and the port um, like so. So protocol plus and slash plus string conversion dot itoa port like so. Now this will give us a really clear um, definition as to what port we're scanning and what protocol we're using to scan that port. And the next thing we're going to want to do is come down here into our initial scan function and do another for loop. So for i equals one, or actually we're going to do it in here. So results equals append results scan port EDP hostname and I like so. Next, we're going to want to run this once again. So go run main.go and I'm going to pause it there and come back to it in just a second. So we're going to leave it there. You can take this one step further and create a wide port scan uh, function, which would iterate over all 65,000 ports and give you a far more comprehensive list of what ports are open and closed. But I'm going to leave that for you to do as the time it takes for these scans to run is quite long. So that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. Now we've covered what port scanning is and how it can be used to detect any vulnerabilities in a system. And we've also created a really simple port scanner in Go that iterates over the first 1024 ports and tests against the TCP and UDP. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, then please leave a like and and subscribe to the channel for more programming content. Cheers.